close your eyes and talk to yourself about the breath. Ask when it's coming in, when it's going out. Ask how it feels. Ask what can be done to make it feel better. And when it feels really good, how do you maintain that? The technical terms for this are Wittaka and Wichana, directed thought and evaluation. The other day someone asked me, how do you start engaging in directed thought and evaluation? They said, well, it's something you're doing all the time. You're always talking to yourself. Even when you're asleep, there's a conversation going on inside, sometimes. And what the Buddha is asking you to do here simply is to direct your inner chatter to something that's useful. Because all too often the things we say to ourselves can be pretty destructive or useless. But we're going to change our conversation inside, make it a useful conversation, something that's aimed at getting the mind under control, giving rise to a sense of well-being right here, and looking into the processes of the mind to see who's doing what or to see which actions lead to other actions lead to other actions, which ones lead to stress and pain, which ones lead to well-being. You want to focus your attention here. That's what directed thought is all about, is focusing your attention on the right topic. And then we try is learning how to say intelligent things about it, useful things about it, things that would be helpful to get the mind to settle down and to be happy to settle down, and then things that will be useful in giving rise to insight. So there's a fair amount of chatter that goes on in concentration. There are times, of course, when it will settle down, when things are really well put together inside. And then all you need is a minimum of a perception, just saying breath, 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 that's enough. But until then, you're going to have to learn how to take this inner voice, which has been talking to you all the time, and train it to be a good voice. Or if you want to think in terms of voices, you want to think of the good voices, the intelligent voices gaining charge inside, taking over inside. So it's nothing foreign or unusual. It's something that you're learning how to do it well. That's what, what we're doing as we practice. Remember the Buddha's image of the raft? Well, where do you get the raft? He says you tie it together, the, the twigs and the branches, on this side of the river and you swim across. So you take what you've already got and you learn how to make it into a raft, instead of just leaving it as twigs and branches piling up on this side. You use it in a proper way to take you across. Well, it's the same way with your thoughts, this inner chatter. For a lot of us, our inner chatter is involved in nothing but greed, aversion, and delusion, sensual desire, ill will, sloth and torpor, restlessness and anxiety, uncertainty. These voices tend to take charge. We're changing the voices, making them intelligent voices, useful voices. So try to sort things out inside and learn how to recognize what's a useful voice and what's a useless voice. Foster the useful ones, and the useless ones won't have a place to stay, because otherwise we get engaged in all kinds of inner chatter that's destructive. And it's totally needless. Why destroy yourself with your inner conversation? You have opportunities to do good. Here they are. Make the most of them. Opportunities to create happiness. Make the most of them. And just because a childish or obstreperous voice inside just keeps yelling and yelling and yelling doesn't mean that that voice should have power or that you should believe it. As I say in Thailand, put it outside the wall. In other words, don't let it get involved in the conversation. There are other better things to talk about, better things to think about, better ways of thinking. The Buddha shows us how. The Ajahn shows us how. So we've got all these good opportunities. Let's make the most of them. <laughs>